But one thing that he said that really stuck out to me was we're so attached to the business, right? Our bit, we're literally wearing our emotions on the sleeve of the business, essentially. I want every single one of you guys to please be a business owner and not be a personally, uh, personally attached to the content that you're creating. Hey y'all, hey, it's Trey Monet. Back to y'all with another video. In today's video, you guys, we are talking all things social media in the year 2024, y'all. The new year is practically upon us at this point. So I definitely want to give you guys all the gems that I have as it relates to building a brand on social media in the year 2024. I also want us to go through and talk about like, what does our audience even want to see from us? What do our customers even want to see from us as it relates to our brands in 2024? So if you are a business owner or if you're a content creator and influencer, this video is for you. So if you're new here, I am Treya Monet. I am your content and your business bestie. I teach people how to make money online through marketing and also through social media. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. All right, so the first thing that I have to go through and talk to you guys about that I feel like has been on the rise for many, many years as a really great social media strategy with growing online is building community. You have to get really, really good at building community. And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, how do I build community? What is community? All the different things. I'm happy that you asked. <laughs> so when it comes to community, you want to think about it as like your own little tribe, right? As like your own group of people who are like, they got your back, right? Building community and community essentially, one thing that I think of when I think about community is beehive. Beehive is that is a community, okay? That is a community of people who are stands for a particular brand or a particular person. Beehive, of course, is Beyonce's tribe, her fan group, her support system, whatever, you know? And I feel like building community is going to be so important in 2024, you guys. And that's going to be the thing that's going to allow your brand to go from zero to 100 is the power of having a community. And one thing that I'll definitely use as an example of someone else who has a really powerful community is Keith Lee. If you living under a rock, you if you are living are living under a rock, you may not know who Keith Lee is, but Keith Lee is a fantastic fantastic creator on TikTok primarily and he is a food critic. And I want to talk about two things as it relates to Keith Lee today. I really want us to deep take a deep dive into him building a community and also him as an expert and how he's positioned himself as an expert without a fancy degree or without any fancy title, right? Without a professional title. He positioned himself as an expert because he said so. And I want us to take a deep dive into that here in a second. But jumping back over to community, building a community is essential for your success on social media. Your community is almost like your little tribe, right? And one thing that I'll definitely say about Keith Lee is he built community and that is why he has been able to sustain his brand for so long and he's only going to get bigger because his community is getting bigger. And the reason why his community is going to get bigger is because he's relatable. Keith Lee, you're not going to see him. I mean, granted, he do be dripped out. I ain't going to lie to you, right? I've seen a lot of videos of like his shoe collection and all the things. But one thing I'll definitely say is he is extremely relatable. And I feel like that is going to be the game changer in 2024, you guys, is this whole black girl luxury era, this whole, um, you know, fancy lifestyle thing. This That stuff is done. People are living, people, life is life in right now for a lot of people. They don't want to see the fanciness, the aesthetics and all of those things. I feel like that stuff is a thing of the past now at this point. P life is life in for a lot of people and they really want to be able to to come in and see you as a creator or see you as a business owner and be able to insert themselves in your story or be able to insert themselves in your product or whatever it is that you're going through and creating or selling. And I feel like that's one thing that Keith Lee excels at so good is he is relatable, but he's also solving a problem. And that's the reason why his community is going to continue to grow again and again and again and again is because he went through and he provided community but also from a relatable relatability standpoint 
Right. You're going to see his daughter um, probably with her hair a little bit messed up, running around, you know, with her um, with um, Ronnie. And his wife is extremely relatable, too. You don't see her with a full beat face. She lets her acne. I know she has been definitely dealing with acne a lot in the past. She lets that shine through. Right. And they are real. They are raw and they are organic. And I feel like that is definitely something that we're going to see a lot more in 2024. And that is going to be one thing that's going to allow you to build community more and more and more is by you just being you. And I really got to go through and talk to y'all about this today. Um, I was just listening to a podcast and let me flip my notes because I want to make sure I'm getting what this um, creator said verbatim. He said, you're allowing your self-esteem issues to hinder you from creating content. He said, you are allowing your self-esteem issues to hinder you from creating content. I said, oh my God. He says, how are you going to serve your audience if you are allowing your self-esteem issues to hinder you from creating content? He said, and one other thing that he said that I was like, oh my goodness, it literally, I feel like I was being read. Because of course we all have self-esteem issues. We all have things about us that we feel like we want to change or things that we may not be as fond of. You know, I feel like no one is 100% confident in my personal opinion, right? And one thing that he said that really stuck out to me, he says that how are you going to allow your business to grow but you're not allowing your business to grow because you can't grow within you. So another thing that this creator said that really stuck out to me, he says that be a business owner and not be attached to creating content. That's why it's so hard for you to go through and create because we're so stuck in our emotion, right? So you got to run your business as a business and remove yourself from the business, right? So you want to think about it this way. And I love what he said so good. And I'm going to insert it. If I can find the clip, I'll insert it somewhere in this video. And I'll be sure to link it down below. The last thing I want to tell you on this question. I want everybody here who has ever struggled with insecurity, being able to not feel comfortable with themselves, looking at themselves on camera. Your parents didn't affirm you. Your brother didn't affirm you. Your, your last recent relationship, your ex didn't affirm you. And now you have low self-esteem issues and different things that are going on. And you're not able to, to, to feel good about what it means for you to create content. I want every single one of you guys to please be a business owner and not be a personally, uh, personally attached to the content that you're creating. Because once you remove the emotion from content creation, and for what content performance looks like, you will start to see the shift in your business and you will start to see the shift in your content because you will start to understand this is not a bad performing video because my self-worth is, is something on wrong with me. People don't like me. People don't like how I look. Oh, I'm unattractive. Oh, people don't like my brand. Oh, my logo sucks. Oh, my logo is not as good as World and Vision. Oh, my graphics aren't as good as World and Vision. Oh, my graphics aren't as good as all these other brands are. No, people aren't attacking you. They want to be able to consume the business. So many of us, what ends up happening is that we allow our self-esteem to be the reason why we don't create content. And now our businesses never grow because we are so emotionally attached to the outcome of what's taking place instead of removing our emotion and being a business owner and being a provider and somebody that's going to go home from this event, look your people in the eye and say, I got a plan. It's OK. We good. You're doing this for your family. You're doing this for your loved ones. You're doing it for people that, that you care about the most. You need to make sure that you remove the emotion so that you and your family can eat and you can leave a generational legacy for whatever brand that you are building and whatever God's called you to do. Make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. But one thing that he said that really stuck out to me was we're so attached to the business, right? Our bit, we're literally wearing our emotions on the sleeve of the business, essentially. So when you're thinking about creating content for your business or you're thinking about how you're being seen to your audience as it relates to the business, we're literally so emotionally involved in the business that it's hindering our growth. You got to remove, you know, those emotions. You got to remove, you know, those thought processes, right? You are literally running a business to be the betterment of someone else's life because we all know the best brands and businesses solve problems. So you got to be able to remove those emotions, you guys. And I literally, I feel like it was a bar 
And I feel like it really made me look at look at business entirely different because we feel like, you know, we, we have to be so involved. You know, we feel like we have to be, you know, so emotionally invested, which is great to, you know, have a business that you're extremely passionate about. But when it comes to creating content on social media, you got to let those emotions go. Right. You got to let those emotions go. We're so worried about how we look. We're so worried about the fat hanging off the side of our stomach, right? We're so worried about our hair being a little bit messed up over here. We're so worried about, you know, our backgrounds and all the different things. Create the content for the people. That goes back to what we just talked about as it relates to relatability, right? Not everybody got the fancy background, right? And, I, and I'm talking to myself at this point, right? Not everybody has the fancy background. Not everybody has the, the lighting equipment and, you know, all the things. Start where you are. Start where you are, y'all. And I feel like that's one thing that I really respect about Keith Lee is he started with what he had. And it didn't make sense. Bro is over here reviewing food in a Paw Patrol chair of his daughter that he couldn't fit in, right? And he took something that was so relatable (laughs) and made it into something great, right? So community is so important, you guys. I'm going to be sure to insert that clip if I haven't already. But you got to watch that clip in that message. It was a powerful message, you guys, as it relates to just separating your emotions from your business. Another thing while we're on the topic of Keith Lee, you guys, is positioning yourself as an expert. I got to get into that as it relates to building yourself on social media is positioning yourself as an expert. And what I mean by that is becoming whoever it is that you want to be. The next day, tomorrow, right now, even change your whole Instagram bio. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be known for and position yourself in that way? That's the power of personal branding. Whoever it is that you want to be, you can become that person. Of course, you don't want to be a gimmicky. You don't want to be a scammer and say that you are this type of person or you can meet this deliverable and you can't. But I feel like it's important to know that you have that availability, (laughs) right? So for example, Keith Lee, he positioned himself as a food critic way before he gave himself the name of being a food critic. He was just on TikTok sitting in his Paw Patrol chair reviewing food from local restaurants in, I believe he lives in Las Vegas. He gave himself and he earned the title of being a food critic because he put the work in in order for him to position himself as that expert. So not, I don't want to get it twisted, you guys. I'm not saying just go out here and change your Instagram bio tomorrow and say that you are this person. Of course, there's definitely work that you have to do in order to claim that, that actual victory title. But what I'm saying is it can be done. But you got to believe in yourself enough to know that I can position myself as whatever it is that I want to go through and do as long as I put in the work in and as long as I believe it. And I feel like one thing that I want to say with that, and I hear this all the time, if you guys don't listen to Nehemiah Davis, he's really, really great. And he says this all the time is how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. Right. And. uh, I really want to make sure that in 2024 that I I operate in excellence. I feel like in 2023, I didn't operate in excellence. I'm going to be the first to say it. I didn't operate in excellence. Everything that I do and everything that I put my hands on, I want it to be excellent. I want it to be great. I want it to be powerful. I want it to have that stamp of approval on it, right? I want it to have that Keith Lee effect, right? And that's a whole nother social media strategy as well is that Keith Lee effect, y'all. But one thing that I'll definitely say is how serious you take something is how serious everyone else takes something. And I know this for certain. I know when I first started my business, I was extremely serious about it. People probably laughed at me when I first started or people had their own judgment to say. But since I took it serious, everybody else doesn't have any other choice but to take it serious. We're so consumed about what people think of us. We're so consumed of, you know, just doing a little bit. If you go out there and you put your foot down and you stand on business, everybody else got no other choice but to stand on business because you stood on business. Right. So. One thing I'll say is however serious you take content creation or however serious you take your social media, your business or, you know, influencing whatever it is, is how serious everybody else going to take it. And that includes your customers and that includes these brands as it relates to getting brand deals as well. And man, I feel like I'm just preaching to myself right now because it is so important that we take these things serious. And one thing that I plan to do in 2024, you guys, is to operate my business like I would a nine to five. Why are we laying on the couch in the middle of the day? I'm talking to myself right now. 
Why are we laying on the couch in the middle of the day sometimes? Why are we going to do random errands that we can wait to do on the weekend? Just because you have the time to do something does not mean you should use that time for that task. If you was on somebody's clock right now, you would have been fired. I'm talking to myself, right? So I think that it is essential that we operate in excellence. We be giving all of this energy to these nine to fives. We be giving all of these energies to these corporations, but we have to make sure that we are operating in excellence for our businesses to be able to grow. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is different platforms, right? I really want to start with TikTok. We know TikTok is literally king right now as it relates to content creation. And I feel like in 2024, TikTok is going to see a really big shift. Can I put my finger on exactly what that shift is? No, but I feel like TikTok is going to see a really big shift. And the reason why I say that is because people are consuming more and more and more content. The reason why I guess I will say that I, I can see the shift happening is because since TikTok has been known to blow up, you know, accounts and really help as relates to engagement and growth, we're going to see more creators. And with more creators, that means more content for us to go through and consume. So y'all know me, I'm a stat person. I did some math and I did some research rather. And it just says that the average person consumes about three hours of content per day. Three hours of content per day is equal to 10,800 seconds of content every single day. Right. So I want you all to think about TikTok as I'm saying this. Right. So if you divide that by five to 10 seconds, let's say 10. And what I mean by five to 10 seconds is and the average consumer is consuming anywhere between five to 10 seconds of content, you guys. Right. So we're going to take that 10,800 seconds because roughly the average consumer consumes about three hours of content. Divide that by 10 seconds that we usually spend seeing one post. We usually spend anywhere between five to 10 seconds per post, right? So we're going to divide that. And that means that the average consumer is consuming 1,000 pieces of content per day. The average consumer is consuming 1,000 pieces of content per day. And I heard this before, and i got to bring it back here, you guys, is this just means that social media, particularly TikTok, is like having a sugar rush. Right. You you're, you're looking at the content, you're looking at the content. And then as soon as you hit the peak, boom, it falls down. And what I mean by that is you can literally create a piece of content on TikTok. It can go viral. It can have a million views, hundreds of thousands of views. You can get hundreds of thousands of followers. And guess what? That sugar rush is going to happen and then it's going to go flying back down if you don't continue to create content. The reason why I'm saying this is because when that sugar rush happens right at the top, these people have thousands, a thousand pieces of content that they're going to consume every single day. So you got to make sure that you're consistent. You don't want to just go out there and post one piece of content and it does really, really good. And then now you're sitting here on this high and now your customers don't have nowhere to go to. It's literally like a sugar rush. They're going to rush and then it's going to come falling back down if you don't find that even balance. And what I mean by that even balance is staying consistent. Really looking at your metrics, really looking at your data, really looking at your analytics. Your data, your analytics is literally the GPS to your business, y'all. I say this all the time. It is going to tell you what to do. It's going to tell you what content performs the best. It's going to tell you what content you probably should look out for. It's going to tell you what you should do here, what you should do there. But one thing I'll say about TikTok is since it's so much content to consume, People will literally like your content. They'll like it. They might save it. They might share it. They'll perhaps go through and follow you. But guess what? After they follow you, they own to the next creator. So it's up to you to make sure that you are consistently pouring into your audience. That's what I mean by that sugar rush, you guys, is you got to consistently pour into your audience and you got to look at those data and those analytics because it's literally going to tell you what your audience likes and what they don't like. Another thing I'll say about content creation and also social media in 2024 is we are going to continue to see a rise in video content. You guys, I feel like photography and photo content is going to be a thing of the past, at least maybe in the next maybe four or five years. I feel like it'll still be heavily used, but something just tells me it's going to be used in a completely different capacity. Like, I don't know why, but I see social media having like two different tabs 
a tab for photos and then a tab for videos. I feel like they already kind of have that on your profiles on um, Instagram, for example. But I feel like social media is going to take that turn where we are going to see more and more video content. The reason why I feel like video content is going to continue to do really well is because like we talked about earlier, it's relatable. A photo, you can edit it. A photo, you can go through, you can Photoshop, you can do all of these different things to modify a photo. What you see in the video is what you get. It is very difficult for you to modify video content, right? You might be able to modify a couple things here or there, but for the really big picture of a photo of a video, it's really difficult for you to go through and to make edits, you know, really hardcore edits to video content. And video content is just much more relatable, right? It's 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 real, it's in real time, right? So I feel like that's something that we're gonna definitely see is less photo, more video. So please, you guys, make sure you are consistent with your video content. And while we're also in the topic of video content is your content needs to have a hook. Nobody cares what your name is. Please stop starting your videos off by saying, hey, y'all, my name is such and such. Let me show you guys this or today I'm doing this. Nobody cares what your name is. I'm so sorry to tell you, you got to start your videos with a hook. Let's say you're dropping your kids off to school. Maybe you might be doing a day in the life. You might say something along the lines of, let me tell y'all how Susie teacher had me messed up today. Or you might have say something along the lines of, y'all, I dropped my daughter off to school and she got Cheetos all over my back seat. Let me tell y'all how my day went today, right? You want to go through and start your video off with a hook. People don't care who you are. I'm so sorry to tell you. They don't care who you are. They want to know how they can be entertained or how they can be educated, right? That's what they worried about. So if I'm educating my audience about social media, for example, I might say something along the lines of, y'all, I got the secret code on how you can grow your social media in 2024. That's a hook. They want to hear more. They don't want to hear, hey, y'all, my name is Troya Monet. I'm a content creator and a business coach. They don't care about that. They want to know how their needs can be met. So make sure you guys are doing that as it relates to social media in 2024. You got three seconds, right? We already talked about just now how you got five to 10 seconds for people to consume your content. You got three seconds for them to even want to know, for them to even, you know, make the guess of, of whether or not they even want to see the content in the first place. Right. So you got three seconds to grab their attention and you got five to 10 seconds in order for them to consume it. So you got to make sure that y'all are starting y'all's content pieces with a hook. The next thing that I feel like is going to be very relevant in 2024 as it relates to social media is going to be collaborations. You guys collaborations are going to be essential. And I want you guys to look at collaborations as something that is needed for your brand and for your business, especially from a content creator standpoint and even as a business owner standpoint as well. The power of collaborations is you can take advantage of something called OPA. And let me put y'all in on OPA. OPA stands for other people's audiences. Sarah over here, she might have a jewelry brand. Troya, me over here, I might have a clothing brand. Me and Sarah need to collaborate. The reason why we need to collaborate, of course, we want to make sure it's fit. Of course, we want to make sure our audiences are similar. All the different things. Do your due diligence on the back end. But the reason why we want to go through and collaborate is because we can take advantage of something called OPA. That stands for other people's audiences. Not only am I going to go through and get access to OPA or, you know, other people's audiences by going through and partnering with Sarah, I'm going to get access to her audience on social media. But guess what? I'm also going to get access to her audience through her email marketing. Right. So OPA, you guys taking advantage of other people's audiences is essential in 2024. I plan to do a lot more collaborations. Y'all have seen me partner with so many different brands. Y'all have seen me speak on so many different stages. And what that does is it allows me to take advantage of OPA, other people's audiences for free for the most part, right? So go through and do your Instagram lives with people who you feel like fit your target audience in some type of way. Go through and collab on collections. Go through and collab on YouTube videos. Take advantage of OPA. Put other people in your videos. Stop thinking that I don't want I don't want such and such to be posted on my channel. Well, ask her to be posted on yours. Right. Take advantage of OPA. You guys, it's going to be crazy in 2024 trying to compete, you know, as it relates to just being seen on social media. Me taking advantage of OPA just gives me a front row seat of someone else's audience that I probably more than likely would not have even had access to. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about as it relates to growing on social media in 2024 is storytelling. 
this is something that I want to do more of in 2024 as well is the power of storytelling, right? And one quote I recently heard was facts tell, stories sell. I do not care what grade of fabric your shirt is. I do not care about the different features of a garment. I want to hear the story. Tell me how this product is going to change my life. Tell me how this product changed your life. Tell me how this product changed the lives of many. Tell me how this product is going to make my life more convenient. Storytelling is going to be essential. Tell me how you had the worst day of your life. Tell me how you had the best day of your life. Tell me, give me an inside scoop of what you're going through, right? Storytelling, y'all, is essential. It is going to go through, and it's going to really go through and separate the greats from the others in 2024 is through storytelling. People want to see an inside scoop as it relates to your life. And this just goes back to what we've been talking about all along with being relatable. People want to see the behind the scenes and they want to hear the behind the scenes of what you're going through. If you just told me how your boyfriend broke up with you and how you plan on moving out the house and how you got to take you and your three kids, that's storytelling. Of course, we don't want people in our business, but I feel like that's another thing that I really want to touch on just a little bit here. And I'm going to do a whole entire separate YouTube video on it is privacy. How do we what is that fine line and what are those boundaries like as it relates to privacy, being a business owner or privacy, being a content creator? Right. So that's going to be a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But you got to let people in. Right. And I know that kind of contradicts what I just said about separating business from your emotions. But I feel like there's a fine line as well as it relates to boundaries. Right. People want to know who they're shopping with. Right. But you still got to separate yourself as it relates to your self-esteem as well. So one thing I'll definitely say is, like I said, facts tell, stories sell. People want to know the story behind the brand. Why did you start, right? A lot of us also are losing touch as to why we started, right? But when we're thinking about storytelling is tell me why you started the brand, right? Tell me how you're on a mission to help a thousand people with whatever your mission is as it relates to your business, right? Tell me how this product is going to solve my problem and tell me how it solved yours. You want to think about this as storytelling. I gave you guys this example in another video, but I talked about eyelashes. I don't care what the inches are, the eyelashes. I don't care about the thickness. I don't care about the millimeters. I want to hear the story. Tell me how you wore these eyelashes in Walmart or at Target and you were picking something off of the shelf and a beautiful, fine, gorgeous man walked up to you and he said, oh my gosh, you have the most beautiful eyes. And no one ever complimented you on your eyes before. You were actually a little bit insecure of your eyes. And he told you this and now you just now you're like now you can't do anything but blink and blush like that's storytelling. You guys what I'm saying? See what I'm saying here is that storytelling. You could come up with your own stories. Brands do it all the time. What y'all think commercials are? Commercials ain't nothing but storytelling. They got 30 seconds to tell you a story. I just listened to a podcast the other day with Social Proof Podcast and Marty Woodward. And he talked about the power of mastering the 30 second commercial. You got 30 seconds to tell a story. And that's what we should really be thinking about as it relates to our reels. I would never, I wouldn't say I would never, but in 2024, I'm going to try my best to not create a reel over 30 seconds. People's attention spans are extremely short. You got 30 seconds. You got three seconds in the beginning to grab their attention. And you got 30 seconds in order to tell that story, right? So we got to get good at storytelling. Put yourself in the shoes of your audience and find a unique way that you're able to tell this story without being long winded. And you want to make it quick, clear and concise. Okay. So I know this video is probably a little long. I feel like I've been on here just chit chatting it up with y'all as it relates to social media. Give this video a big thumbs up if you found this video helpful. I can go on and on and on as it relates to social media. If you guys want a part two, because I still got notes to go through. I just don't want to make this video too long. Um, I would definitely go through and give you guys a part two. I hope that you enjoy this video, you guys. In 2024, let's not be afraid to be seen trying. That's my biggest thing. And I feel like since I've seen the Beyonce movie, since I've been just educating myself a lot more on different podcasts and really just educating myself more on social media, really working on myself as an individual, as it relates to self-esteem and, you know, all the different things is we cannot be afraid to be seen trying. You have to separate your emotions from the bag. 
There ain't no money in being emotional. There's no money in being emotionally involved or emotionally invested into something, right? We got to separate those things, right? That's going to be the thing that's going to allow you to be more consistent, get more sales, and really reach your targeted audience, you guys. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. All links will be down below. And I just want to say thank you guys so much and have a happy new year and happy holidays. Peace.